Welcome back, coaches, to 10 Questions with Powered by Honda. Today's guest played eight years in the big leagues. He represented Canada at the 2004 Olympics. He's uh, represented Canada all four World Baseball Classics, um, and he scored the winning run to win the gold medal in the 2015 Pan Ams. Um, our guest today, he's now a Brewers scout, uh, scouting Canada. We're very excited to have Pete Orr with us. Thanks for being here, Pete. Uh, pleasure to be here. All right, first question comes from Dave. What is your philosophy on a hitters with a two-strike approach? Do you prefer to choke up and try to put the ball in play, or would you rather see solid contact? Well, uh, first of all, you want to see solid contact, but there's multiple ways to do that. Um, I think, uh, number one, the coach has got to have some feel. I'm going to probably refer to the word feel on a lot of these questions uh, that we're going to talk about today. Uh, but you have to have feel to express to the player what you want to accomplish. Um, two strike approach is to not strike out. We never want to just accept striking out. Um, I think we're doing that too much in today's game. Um, but that doesn't mean we have to just sacrifice the ability to drive the baseball. Um, I actually think it's a great opportunity to um, reaffirm or, or really concentrate on the fundamentals of hitting. You know, if you have a two strike approach, what do you want to do? You want to see the ball out of the hand. Well, you always want to see the ball out of hand, but when you're talking to a kid about a two strike approach, it's a good time to uh, reaffirm that. Um, you want to let the ball travel. Okay, that's kind of the same thing. So you're not going to get too jumpy up front. Uh, you want to stay through the middle of the field. Uh, these are all things you would tell a player about a two strike approach, but they're actually things you want to do anyways. It's just a great time to, to reaffirm that. Um, again, um, you got to have feel on the type of player. You know, I think we're too quick to take our 12 year old three hole hitter and, and tell him just to swing for the fences every time when if that player is going to move on to a higher level, maybe whatever it's, you know, triple A baseball as a 15, 16 year old, or, uh, you know, maybe even college, they're going to have to learn how to play the game a different way. So if they've never practiced it at 10 or 11 years old, how are you going to expect them to do it when they're 17, 18, 19? So, you know, talk to kids about it and, and have them understand that there is something called a two strike approach. Don't just go choking up and trying to slap the ball and play, but just understand the situation. Awesome, man. That's great info. Next question comes from Amber. Uh, do you have any strategies to help a fielder who's been struggling a couple games in a row, making some pretty big errors? Like, do you have any, any tips on how you talk to that player to just kind of move on to the next game? For sure. And I think uh, the biggest thing to, that doesn't get emphasized enough as infielders is how hard it is. And we see these guys on TV and we think that that's normal. It's not normal, you know, especially for Canadian kids playing on a lot of the fields that our kids play on, you know, there's bad hops. And there's things that get association, associated with bad hops. You know, it starts messing with your head mentally. You get, you get timid. You get afraid just because you're, you're playing defense on a, on a ball that you're not sure where it's going to go. So it, it's, it's natural to make errors. It's okay. Um, so express that to the player. Um, most of the time, it is just a mental thing. If the player's good, it's a mental thing that they're struggling with. So number one would be um, – Build up the kid's confidence. Um, build up the player's confidence to the point where they, you know, it might be fake, but at least they're believing in themselves and, and what they can do. Uh, drills you can do are simplify it. Really just simplify things. So roll the ball to them. Get them to work on footwork. A lot of times when infielders make errors, they're out of rhythm. Um, the other things you could do um, is, is have them take ground balls with one hand. And, and this gets a little overblown sometimes, but – the reality of it is um, a lot of times when you go two hands, especially on a ball to your left, you're taking yourself out of your best athletic position, really. So, uh, for example, if I'm reaching to my left like this and I go over here with my right hand, I'm not as athletic as I would be if I'm just like this. So that's, that's the simplicity to that one. So just tell them to take um, ground balls one hand for 10 or something like that. The other, my favorite one that I actually used when I played was count the hops. Uh, a lot of times you're just out of rhythm. So sometimes when someone's hitting you ground balls and you count the hops, it just simplifies it for your brain. And all of a sudden you're just like one, two, three, and you're fielding the ball instead of like 
panicking and trying to time it. Uh, you just count them and you, you time it on your own, really. Uh, but it, it's, it's, it's a, it, I think the biggest thing is just building up the kids' confidence back up, simplify the drills, make them so simple, easy, that they'll build their confidence back up. That's great. Next question comes from Vincent. Is there one area of today's game you think is being overlooked and should be focused on more by players and coaches? You know, for example, base running, situational hitting, bunting? Yeah, for sure. I think uh, I'm going to go back to what I mentioned in the first question. It's feel for the game. Um, I think all those things you mentioned are, are part of um, situational aspects of the game, or I like to say feel. As, and we're kind of losing feel how to win a game with players. And I don't necessarily have the direct answer how to get it back to a younger age um, because, you know, the way I try to describe it is when you were a little kid playing in the park and you noticed that there was no one standing on one side of the field, you would hit it to that side of the field and get a hit. Um, but we don't practice that or we don't do that now with kids. So, how do we expect them to just start doing that when they're 20 years old and in, in, in double A minor leagues, double A it's, it's, it's hard to do. So um, that's the biggest thing I think we're missing. Um, if you want to go deep into this conversation, you know, the analytic guys have proved that, Hey, bunting and, and the situational hitting thing doesn't actually equate to wins. You know, we want guys to hit doubles homers. Well, I, I wholeheartedly disagree with that because if we did execute these things better, they would result in wins. Um, so I think if we can get back to just playing the game at a younger age to, you know, if there's no one standing somewhere, hit it there and get, get a hit and get on first. And that'll help you win baseball games. But, you know, uh, it just doesn't happen. I, I see it. My kids play at a young level. It doesn't happen. They're not bunting. You don't want them to bunt really. So, I don't have a good answer for it, but I definitely feel it's something missing from the game. And to go deeper in it, I think it's missing from the entertainment value. You know, if I'm, you know, at Rogers Center sitting in the 500 section, looking down on the field, and I see seven players standing on one side of the field, and then that hitter hitting it into those seven players, I'm like, well, what am I paying for here? <laughs> you know, kind of thing. So I think it's hurt the, the entertainment value of the game a little bit, but uh, it, it's just the way it's gone. Great stuff, man. Next question comes from Evan. Who is one infielder in the major leagues kids should emulate? Uh, you know, I, I thought, uh, well, it's, it's a tough one because I can't think of one just off the top of my hat, head. Um, you know, they're all awesome. Um, Anderson Simmons is, is one of my favorites to watch just because of the athleticism and, and he's always looking for an edge to, to throw behind a runner or make a great play. Um, I think TJ, you, you know me well enough. I'm a huge Freddie Galvis fan. Uh, I was excited, you know, to see him play in, in this city for a bit, but uh, it, he's just so smooth and the way he goes about it, like it's, he makes it look so easy. And I think that'd be great for kids to just see how he just trusts himself and his ability to make plays. Um, but I don't, I also think that it's important for kids to watch lots of different type of players you know we're all different i don't think there's uh you can't just clone yourself into being somebody else um i think we see that in basketball too you know kobe bryant talked about how um you know there are certain things in michael jordan's game obviously that he tried to emulate it wasn't like he just wanted to be exactly michael jordan but he definitely took things you know so i looked at that in baseball too if i if if i was a kid and i love say uh nolan arenado who's amazing um, in Colorado there at third base, but I wouldn't necessarily tell a kid to, to, to do exactly what he does because some of the things, he did, they're almost impossible, right? So you take things from each player and, 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 and try to see if you can pull it off. I think that's another aspect of this question that, that I'll add on to is uh, practice the fundamentals uh, with kids, but also allow some time in those fun fundamentals or in, those, in that practice to be creative. You know, give them a cup, you know, five or six at the end of your ground ball round to try things, you know, make plays on the run, do the crazy Derek Jeter backhand play, you know, try that because how are they going to know if they can do it unless they actually try? That's awesome. Yeah, I think coaches, we, we focus so much on just making the routine play, but you got to be able to make the hard play too. So to focus on that practice, I think is a good, 
good advice. Next question comes from Graham. Throughout your career, was there a drill like in the off season that you did that, that really helped from a fielding aspect? Yeah, uh, definitely. Um, for me personally, it was uh, footwork, keeping your feet quick. Um, that's not something that comes natural to everybody. Um, you know, ladder drills were a good drill for me that I could just do on my own. I didn't have to be on a baseball field to do it. Um, I also think challenging yourself and trying new things keeps your athleticism up, especially in your lower half. So, you know, there's some off seasons I played pickup basketball. Um, you know, obviously I controlled my environment that I was doing in, made sure it was space, safe. Uh, but I felt playing basketball actually helped me as an infielder. Um, you know, uh, stuff like that. There's little things you can do, you know, get a racquetball, a real light ball, bounce it on the wall. You can just work on your hand, like just being soft without thinking about it. You know, no stress drills where you're just making things become natural for yourself. Um, the simple one, the most simple one would be throwing a ball um, and finding the four seams. You know, I think kids, you know, forget that that has to be a natural thing and it takes a while. So you just sitting on a couch and, and you throw a ball up and turn it and all of a sudden you got four seams on a baseball. Um, that's a that's a good one. I also think a, a major one for kids as you get older and to a higher level is keeping the flexibility uh, up in your hips and ankles. I think, you know, for me personally, that was as I aged, that was the most difficult thing. You know, every spring training, I'd show up and be like, oh, man, like my lower half isn't moving like it did in the last game of the season before. So uh, just try to keep, you know, that flexibility up and, and, and challenge yourself to stay as athletic as possible. Awesome, man. Next question comes from Brandon. At what age would you recommend players start working out weights? And do you see, uh, does that always translate into more power, better arm strength? No, uh, definitely there's no guarantee it's going to translate. I think it can help, um, but you got to use feel to do it at the right time and, and educate yourself to do the right thing for the your specific body. Uh, everyone's different of, of when their bodies can handle a certain level of uh, lifting. Um, you got to be very smart with it. Um, I'm not a professional there, so I can't tell you when is the right time. Uh, but you definitely have to use field to do it. I don't, I think a lot of people confuse it with, you know, bench press and heavy squats. You know, there's a lot of other things that the young athletes can do to improve their strength. Um, but again, it's gotta be done with feel. And I think the biggest thing is to realize it's, you're not going to create a major league player by doing off field weightlifting or training. It's just something that can, can help a good player become better. Um, and, and not confuse that, you know, you're not going to hit home runs just because you are able to lift this amount of weight. It's just something that might be able to help you. That's awesome, man. Next question. What do you think is the best way for a player to be seen? Should they focus on just playing for the team they're on or should they attend showcase events, post videos online? Uh, what, what's your thought process on this as a scout? Uh, number one, definitely focus on on playing for your team and doing and being the best teammate and uh, and player on your team, and just hold believe that you will get noticed if if you go about it that way. Uh, this day and age, there's not a ton of players ever being missed. Um, there's so much access to social media, um, and you know everyone's got a camera phone. Everyone, everything's on video pretty much. If you're a really good player, it gets talked about. Um, not much gets missed. So concentrating on being the best you can for your team and your teammates and your coaches, and then go from there. Um, the showcase environment is a reality of the new era of baseball, amateur baseball. Just educate yourself, uh, know what you're getting into. Um, realize that not all, but some of these are businesses and some of them are good businesses, but realize they are a business. So, Keep that in mind when you are doing them and, and, and don't have these lofty expectations that just because you do something means you're going to get a scholarship or you show up to this and pay 150 bucks that it means that you're going to be all over the internet or something like that. And, you know, educate yourself on what you're getting into and do you have to go to all of them? No, pick the ones that, that you think are the best fit for you personally. It doesn't mean it's your best fit for your best friend or your teammate. 
you know, pick and choose the right ones. Um, like I said, not a lot of players are being missed not this day and age. And scouts, honestly, are looking for that diamond in the rough. They're looking for that guy that no one else has heard of. So, um, you know, they're looking for you and they're trying to find you. Uh, just realize what you're getting into. Also, if you're, if you're playing on one of these teams that is uh, your parents and, and, and players are spending a lot of money to play on these teams and then your coaches are advising you to go to all these other showcases where you're spending even more money, you, you got to realize what's happening here because we're in a day and age where if you're paying that much money to play on these teams, there should be some aspect of promotion done by, by your organization as well. So just educate yourself. All great advice. Uh, next question comes from Frank. What can a player focus on when attending a showcase event uh, to make sure that they put their best foot forward? Uh, good question because this is, I get, you get asked this question a lot. Uh, number one, be yourself. Uh, show what your best assets are. You know, if you're fast, make sure you run, you, you, you show it. You know, if you got a good arm, show it, you know. Um, don't be afraid to be an individual. Uh, don't just, hey, don't just, hey, you're going to get six ground balls, field your ground balls, and then walk away. If you're good at something, show it. If, you're, if your feet are lightning quick or your hands are lightning quick, show it. You know, if, if hitting's your thing and, and you get a chance to take 10 cuts, let it rip. You know, don't, don't hold back because that's your opportunity. Um, I, one of my favorite things in the, sayings in this game is uh, as long as you got a, a jersey on, you're going to get an opportunity, but you have no idea when that opportunity is coming. So don't try to dictate when your opportunity comes. Just go about it right all the time, and, and therefore you always take advantage of it. So uh, be yourself and, and trust in it. Um, the other thing, you have to show the scouts or coaches, whether it be college coaches or professional scouts or, or scouts for these, for these high-level clubs, that you want to play. Um, they got to believe that you have a passion for the game and, and that you love it because um, you're going to be representing them. Uh, so you got to remember that, show energy, show a passion for the game, and, and you know, just give it everything. Next question comes from Steve. I coach a 14U rep team, um, and I have a player who's interested in switch hitting. Do you think um, it's wise for me to help him switch hit, or do you think they should just stick to him getting better from his normal side? Uh, definitely try it. Why not? Like, um, as long as it's not something that's going to uh, take away from the player and, and, and make him completely awful. Like, let's be honest, if we got a guy that's, you know, struggling as it is, and then you're like, hey, let's do switch hitting, you know, maybe that's not the best idea. But, uh, yeah, give it a whirl. You know, I'm, I, I said it about the infield. How are you going to know if you can do it unless you try it? So the same thing applies to the switch hitting. Um, have realistic expectations that it, it is a takes a while you know it takes kids 10 years to learn how to hit and so learning how to switch it might take a little while and not to get too frustrated with it early um it's a rare thing to be really good at it so keep that in mind as well but yeah definitely try it and have fun with it and enjoy it and you never know uh what can come of it yeah i i've never understood in my life of 20 years in baseball how people switch hit in at like the professional level it's like the hardest thing to do is hit to begin with and then to be able to do it from both sides is just it, it is tj it is a lot of work i will say that the teammates that i had that were switch hitters there it is it's not i'm not gonna say it's twice the amount of work but it there is more work to it they they take their rounds one side and then they hop on the other and do their work there um you know you talk the guys joke about you know when one's on, the other's usually not quite so on, and it, and it shifts back and forth. You know, maybe their left-handed swing feels good, and their right-hand swing doesn't feel as great, and then the next week it's the opposite. So it is a, it's a, you're adding another level of mental toughness to the game, but uh, if you could pull it off, there's great opportunities for you. Absolutely. Last question, man, comes from Jamie. Can you walk us through what was going through your mind when you rounded third base and about to score the winning run to capture the gold medal for Team Canada in the 2015 Pan Am Games? Yeah, I was, I was wondering where Stubby was. He was nowhere to be found. You know, the ball was behind me, so I didn't know where it was, but Stubby was so excited. He was down by home plate already, I think. Uh, no, I, I just remember thinking, go for it. And actually, I was like, didn't think there was a way they'd make a play on me, but uh, – 
I guess Pastor Nicky, he was the guy playing third who I played against a lot actually in the in the minor leagues there. He he uh he I guess made a pretty good throw and would have had me if uh if the catcher was able to hold on to the ball, but uh wasn't and uh yeah, I was just thinking, go for it, let's do this. It's late, let's get it over with and uh see if we can win here. That's awesome, Pete. Well, listen, man, thanks for joining us. Um, thanks for everything you're still doing uh, for amateur baseball in Canada, your work with the junior national team and counting across our country. And uh, we really appreciate always talking with you and uh, we wish you and your family the best. All right. Thanks, TJ. And I appreciate uh, having me on here. It's good.